So for the, for the next session, I'm actually pleased to introduce again Dr. Borja Del Pozo Cruz, who is going to be opening the session for us. Borja is an associate professor of applied health sciences at the University of Cadiz and in physical activity and health at Southern Denmark University. So today, Borja is going to discuss the need for data coming from countries and populations that are traditionally underrepresented. So a, a big part of this is low and middle income countries. He'll also introduce some new development actions, and then we'll hear from some new cohort studies that have recently joined ProPass. So over to you, Boy. Yeah, thank you very much, Jill. And so I'd like to start by highlighting a few gaps detected in the, by the leadership group that developed the, the current World Health Organization Physical Activity Guidelines. This one has been published in, in the paper by Lombard 2020. And essentially is the one that the, the major one is the one probably that we've been hearing all along today and is that we don't have enough data from low and middle income countries. Also highlighted in this paper as a major gap in the physical activity guidelines or by the physical activity guidelines leadership group is that we've got few observational studies that use full analysis or prospectively or retrospectively harmonized meta-analysis to address complex research questions, which is essentially what PROPAS does. Pull meta-analysis and harmonize meta-analysis can examine detailed research questions with high repetitions, likely with broader internal and external validity. Again, external validity referring to, you know, a more generating sort of a more democratic and so from, for all and, and from, from everywhere across the globe. Again, it also suggests that we need to use more device-based measures. And we, we, we've been uh, hearing a lot about this during this conference already, and we'll be uh, definitely hearing more and more, and, and the evidence will be more and more, and uh, hopefully based on device-based uh, device uh, measures or wearable-based uh, measures of physical behaviors. And again, what Propass is, is supporting is adequately powered prospective observational studies using this, these device-based measures. Now it is, it is actually indeed very true that majority of the, of the evidence comes from high income countries. So on the uh, bottom uh, part of the figure, you've got a resized countries where where uh, most of the evidence comes from, but on the upper side of the figure, you can see that you know, even though majority of the populate of the uh, evidence comes comes from uh, high income countries, majority of the population lives in in, in in low and middle income countries. So there's a disproportionate gap that we have to close somehow, and and we are we endeavor to do so. And this has been true, uh, you know, all along since we started the fields of physical activity as a scientific collective. So ProPath is taking action and you might have seen this, this information and Manus have, have mentioned a little bit about this, but you know, we aim to establish a cool data resource on physical activity, posture, location, sleep and health outcomes. We strive to develop methods for processing, harmonizing and, and pulling wearable data. And we support new international studies to collect this type of data, and this is, this is the one that I want to highlight for the session. We strive to expand the evidence base of 24 hour physical activity posture and sleep to underrepresented countries, including low and middle income countries. And I would say as well that, you know, some high income countries are underrepresented as well. So, so we've got, for example, very little evidence on um, the, the south of coming from the south of Europe. And we are also uh, directing some, some efforts towards that. So for example, uh, we've got a, a study coming from, from Spain and soon there'll be another one. And, um, so we're working towards, you know, what is needed and we are doing that. We take an action towards this in two different directions with, you know, partnerships with societies that are might alike. So they, they, they think, um, alike to us and we plan it. We've got some concrete actions there. But also expanding, you know, our, our work towards including these low and middle income countries. So, you know, we're working with countries from Latin America, for example, and, and all the part of the world that are considered low and middle income countries. That's about it. Thank you very much for, for, for your attention and looking forward to any questions, if there's any.
Thanks, Bori. We'll give a, a minute for any questions to come through. But there was a question earlier on from the last session that was asking about current PROPAS efforts to address the low, the lack of low and middle income countries in PROPAS. So could you speak a bit about current and future plans? Yeah, I mean, we've got some concrete actions that are happening right now. For example, we are uh, putting grants towards uh, funding some work in, in, in these countries and regions. We are talking directly to, to people. So the other day, for example, I had a meeting with, uh, you know, so we, we, we're working towards the, and we've got, uh, very importantly, I think we've got a dedicated team within problem that works towards including low and middle income countries. So we are, we're really, you know, putting, putting the effort toward, towards this uh, mission. Great. Thank you. We've had a, a couple questions come through. So. One is asking about the, the biggest barrier to this work. And I guess kind of maybe you can answer these together, but also talking about what, what ProPass resources are shared. So do we fund studies? Do we share protocols? And can we talk a bit more about the practical help that um, would be available to a research team from a lower middle income country? Uh, yeah, I mean, probably the biggest barrier, as Karen mentioned in her talk, is, is funding, it's, it's, it's money and capacity building. And I think ProPass is is doing serious work towards tackling these barriers, uh, both, you know, putting uh, grants and together with people from low and middle income countries to be able to move the field forward also in, in those regions. And also in terms of capacity building, you know, one of us probably travel all around the world, like doing uh, training. We offer help and support with sharing protocols, training teams. So yes, definitely we are uh, working towards those two major, major barriers in what we think in an, in an efficient way that hopefully will gives, gives uh, as the result that we all want, that is having more and more data representative of really the, the whole world. Thanks, Boy. 